Hello, dear friends. Let me apologize again for uh, uh, the fact that I'm uh, missing this uh, wonderful event. Uh, I'm uh, sort of bound by uh, a family commitment that prevents me from joining you in Turin. And uh, sharing uh, happiness with a friend is a real joy and I'm really sorry that I miss it this time. Uh, Joe, uh, what I wanted to do is to thank you for at least three things. And because uh, the capacity of our working memory is only four, that's what I learned now, it sort of decreases from seven to four, and I'm probably uh, reaching uh, the lower limit. Uh, I made some notes. At first I thought I should prepare a PowerPoint for you, and then I thought, oh no, I should just say a few words. So there are three things that I wish to mention, uh, for which I, I'm really thankful. First, for being able to interact with a giant in our field like you. Uh, you are a leader in the field of uh, brain research in general and of emotions in particular. In emotions, you specialized for many years in the study of fear. And now I fear that if I mention that, you'll immediately jump and say, here is another guy that cannot uh, really distinguish uh, between uh, the observation and the qualia. And uh, so I'm saying it uh, very carefully. Uh, you're an expert in the field of uh, a threat response. And uh, the fact that you moved from fear to threat response, uh, for me, is just another indication uh, that you're a leader and uh, that you are a very thought a thoughtful person and uh, that you reevaluate re each time a new the conceptual framework and not only the conceptual framework but also the tenet that guide this conceptual framework. So uh, by now you probably have uh, at least grandkids that uh, were educated in your lab and uh, um, they probably learn to change as well uh, fear for threat and uh, your ability to uh, contribute to understanding of the interaction of the brain with the world is unparalleled from my point of view, I learned a lot from you and uh, I'm very happy that uh, I did it. Uh, you also excel in the ability to explain your work not only to your peers but to the general public and again your books are a beautiful contribution to the interface between science and the public. So this is number one, the contribution that you have contributed to my science. Number two, I wish to thank you for the friendship. Uh, although you are known for very terse and uh, sort of parsimonious comments, they are very deep. I enjoy them a lot. Uh, we met for the first time, I think, 25 years ago, around 25 years ago in New York. And uh, I was very happy to uh, host you here at the Weizmann Institute for a sabbatical. And uh, I, in fact, I remember that at a certain point in that time, uh, you even mentioned that you encountered a snake on the way from uh, your uh, apartment to the lab. But now I know that you didn't fear the snake, but you only reacted with the threat response. And anyway, you probably forgot it. Uh, so uh, uh, you are, in fact, the reason why I formed this long-term and very rewarding relationship with NYU is because of you and I think I, I really thank you for that as well. And the last point that I wish to mention, and I probably add a lot uh, when we meet again very soon, is that uh, you have contributed, you have transformed, you have transformed a, a paper that I wrote or a concept that I uh, contributed in a paper uh, to a rock song and I think it's unique uh, because uh, I know of, of no other example in which a scientific uh, idea uh, found its way to a, a rock song. So for, to, to explain what I mean I have to play something which is here on my desk. I have the, the, the disc somewhere there but uh, I don't have a CD reader anymore. So
So this is of course the idea, this is the trace song and this is the idea uh, about the dominant trace and uh, I'm so grateful because for me the fact that the terminology of dominant trace is in, in embedded in a song is much more important and much more I would say flattering than a few hundreds of uh, citations in the, uh, the ISI web of science and I thank you for that as well and for, mu for your music. For years I used to give your, one of your discs to, as a gift to my PhD student when they completed the work. So having said all that, I wish you, uh, as we say in Hebrew, uh, uh, Mazal Tov, uh, which means good luck, but the meaning in Hebrew is deeper. Hebrew is not a very good uh, language for science, but it's an excellent language for interpersonal relationships. So Mazal Tov means that I wish you embedded in this uh, term is not only good luck, but the fact that I wish you many more years of productive science, of happiness and health, and of friendship. Thank you very much. <laughs>